it is proposed that the First Presidency sustain Russell Marion Nelson as prophet, seer, and revelator, and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have studied the gathering, prayed about it, feasted upon every related scripture, and asked the Lord to increase my understanding. So imagine my delight when I was led recently to a new insight. With the help of two Hebrew scholars, I learned that one of the Hebraic meanings of the word Israel is let God prevail. Travis Wayne Goodsell. So, since you've been hearing about Messiah Ben Joseph as of late, guess what time it is now? Messiah Ben David Moses. <coughs> Let's start with Jeremiah instead. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 5 Behold the days come saith the Lord that I will raise unto David a righteous branch raise unto David and the king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice in the earth and so you see footnote 5a, Jesus Christ, David, Davidic descent of. And then B, TG, Jesus Christ, prophecies about. 5C, TG, Jesus Christ, authority of. D, TG, millennial reign, Jesus Christ, millennial reign. T G E T G Jesus Christ Judge Five F T G God Justice of Doesn't say Jesus. Good thing we're not Trinity, huh, oh, Mormons? <coughs> In his days. So if this is Jesus, therefore it must be the Roman period time, Judah shall be saved. Judah was destroyed by the Romans. Oops. So 
I guess those gospel authors forgot because they were written after the destruction of the second temple by the Romans and the scattering of the Jews into the Saudi Arabian desert. Hmm. And Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, <clears throat> behold the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. If you do know that's the exodus of Moses. So raise unto David a man like Moses. But the Lord liveth, which brought up when led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. What is interesting is that Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 is not referenced here. There's some Isaiah's. There's another Jeremiah, which is a repeat. Then we got Matthew chapter 2. <clears throat> but Deuteronomy 33, wrong Deuteronomy. But no, TG Israel, law, 10 lost tribes of. Nothing. So why didn't they reference this, Bruce R. McConkey? Because this is where Jeremiah would have gotten it from. Deuteronomy is the repetition of the law translated into English. And because the Jews were very precise in copying scrolls, letter for letter, had to be 100% correct. This copy of the law is an exact copy of the law. Therefore, it is the law. So Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, pay attention to the wording. See if you can find a match with what I just said from Jeremiah. Because this is the law, an exact copy of the law. And Jeremiah has to follow the law as a Jew. And thus, pay attention to the exact wording. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hearken. In 15a, they put Deuteronomy 34.10, and it's somewhat of a repeat. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, but not really. 15b, however, we have Acts chapter 3. Verse 22, parentheses, 22 to 23. That should sound familiar to Mormons. Because, oh, there it is. Joseph Smith History, verse 40. What does Joseph Smith say about this prophet? 
He said that that prophet was Christ. So Jesus, who failed to save, but we're just going to say he saved the Jews. Because in his days, that's when it's supposed to be, right? So that's who Joseph Smith is talking about. Malachi comes after the first vision where it's Heavenly Father and Jesus and they say that Christianity is wrong and the creeds are an abomination and so Joseph needs to start his own Christian church and have Jesus as the head of the church right and so then Moroni because Joseph Smith was wrong calling him Nephi wrong that it's the golden plates because those are too heavy <clears throat> and so yes he's saying that hey I'm giving you the Book of Mormon there's gonna be utter destruction so I'm gonna give you the Book of Mormon about another testament of Jesus Christ during the Roman period time here in the Americas where he comes to see them because utter destruction is coming. So I'm going to talk about the past. When Jesus failed to save the Jews because they were utterly destroyed. But we're going to call him the Savior. And he's the Christ. Right? So that's what all this is about. So sure enough, 15B, TG, Jesus Christ, mission of, TG, Jesus Christ, prophecies about. Why would the church lie to us? Church is true. Prophets are true. They speak to Jesus face to face as one man speaketh to another. And so they should know, Travis. There's the one in the Book of Mormon, even, when he comes to the Americas and says, 3rd Nephi, 2023, I'm him. I've been raised up. I am the prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. You shall hearken to me, or you're going to be utterly destroyed. And then Americas... Because he says it in Acts also. Uh huh. This, now we're starting to get confusing. <clears throat> As Joseph Smith says, cut off. When Jesus in Acts, this is after he's dead, so they're talking about previously when he was alive, literal history in the Roman period time. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear, and all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be, translated from the Greek, utterly destroyed from among the people. And so that's Jesus, right? So who heard Jesus during the Roman period time? Nobody. And so thus they were utterly destroyed. Ninth of Av, 70 CE. Oh, okay. So that's what it's all about. Jesus failed to save the people. He's the Savior. And the Jews didn't listen to him and thus why they were destroyed. And so he's coming a second time so this prophecy is no longer in effect because he's going to come again but he's not going to be raised up anymore because he's already been raised up so this isn't the prophecy for the future so what then is Joseph Smith doing talking about it Moroni not Nephi is talking about utter destruction 
adds, they that come shall burn them. And then in addition to these, he quoted the 11th chapter of Isaiah, saying that it was about to be fulfilled. What? He quoted also the third chapter of Acts, 22nd and 23rd verses, precisely as they stand in our New Testament. Okay, Jesus came to the Jews during the Roman period time. They didn't hearken to him. They were utterly destroyed. Okay, he said that that prophet was Christ. Yeah, 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 we know, Jesus. But the day had not yet come. What? Joseph, do we have to correct you again? The day had not yet come. So it's not talking about Jesus of the Roman period? Who were utterly destroyed on 9th of Av, 70 CE. But he came to the Americas, told them, I came, and they were utterly destroyed. Technically cut off. Just like this. So what's going on? I'm confused. This doesn't make any sense. Maybe I should write a letter to the presidency and ask them if they'll give me the answer. I wonder how that would go. We all know how that would go. They'd send it to your state president and then you'd be excommunicated. <clears throat> when they, in the future, after Joseph Smith, who would not hear his voice would be cut off from among the people. And then he quotes the second chapter of Joel, which talks about the sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood, stars fall from heaven. He also said that this was not yet fulfilled. But 200 years later, it should be. Soon. Are we sure about that? Joseph, when you say soon, we usually assume soon. We don't assume 200 years later. You know, it's like Nelson, he said in the coming days. He had to do it twice, because apparently it didn't happen the first time around. Interestingly, there was the 2020 election two years after he said it the first time, and then he said it again in 2022. Hey, it's now two years later. Hey, we're also having an election this year, just like in 2020. Interesting. Hmm. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. It has nothing to do with what he was actually talking about. <coughs> you see the problem here? If you're going to turn the scriptures into literal history, you've got problems. Joseph Smith makes it very clear. Deuteronomy, Acts, 3 Nephi, chapter 20, verse 23, 2023, is in the future, after Joseph. You are illiterate. Don't get angry at me for it. You'll notice that the TGs are gone in the Spanish edition. Who did that, Travis? Who did that? And so, yes, Jeremiah. What is he talking about then? Behold, the days come. Joseph Smith says it's in the future after Joseph Smith. The Lord, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king. King is Christ. King is Messiah. Messiah ben David. His name is not David, he is a descendant of David. 
I know there's the one in, I think it's Ezekiel, that says his name shall be called David. No. Son of David. It's an error in the text. <coughs> Even the Jews know it's Messiah Ben David, son of David. His name was given by Isaiah Emmanuel. His surname, therefore, is Son God at Noonday. <coughs> and so that's all Messiah or Christ is. And so you need to understand the ancient understanding of Messiah. He was a theocratic leader. A Melech Zadek. Melchizedek. A king. Melech. Christ. Messiah. Zadek. High priest. King of kings. Lord of lords. The great high priest. God. That's the concept of God anciently. It was not Trinity God of Christians. <clears throat> and so in his days comes after Joseph Smith. So this is also in the Book of Mormon. Second Nephi, chapter 3, where Joseph Smith is Messiah ben Joseph, son of Joseph of Egypt. Wherefore, Joseph of Egypt truly saw our day. Notice they say a seer rather than a prophet. What is the difference between a prophet and a seer? A prophet predicts the future. A seer has visions and dreams. Did Joseph of Egypt have visions and dreams? Yeah. Seer, appropriately used for him. But he also predicted the future of his family. Was it his family? Were they literal history? Desperate Christians trying to say yes. Even got the Jews to believe in Christianity, to believe that the Bible is literal history. As they keep digging up Jerusalem to find Messiah Ben David Moses the Third, the original, of whom the pattern was set for the future guy. in the wrong place. Try the 18th dynasty of Egypt. <clears throat> and he obtained a promise of the Lord that out of the fruit of his loins seed men don't pop out babies. Women do. Oh, so seed gets planted in a woman and then the baby sprouts after nine months. Seed egg baby. Messiah Ben David Joseph Baby Descent Jen Gender, sex, seed, egg, baby. No other way. Seed, we call males. Egg, we call females. Male, female, baby. Genealogy, no other way. That is science. Anybody who claims another way is anti-science. It's 
psychologists are anti-science, they claim another way because they need clients. They need cash cows who are stupid. <coughs> Religions claim another way. The abstinence only. And so we know that this is Joseph Smith Jr. And it says he's not the Messiah. Well, why did you have to say that? Because if it's Messiah, if it's a descendant of Joseph, but it's not the Messiah, what? Huh? This guy's Messiah Ben Joseph. But it's not Messiah Ben David. That's what it's referring to. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5. Raise up unto David, Messiah Ben David. Matthew chapter 1. This is the genealogy of Joseph of Arimathea. Of David, <laughs> not Jesus. <laughs> you never questioned that, huh? <clears throat> but a branch which was to be broken off. Again, Jeremiah twenty-three verse five. Who raise unto David a branch? And so he's also Messiah ben Joseph. Joseph Smith comes first. Nevertheless, Joseph Smith is to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord that the Messiah ben David Moses should be made manifest. Raise up. Seed egg baby unto Mormons of Joseph's church in the latter days. So we should expect to find Deuteronomy eighteen, fifteen through nineteen. Five A Joseph Smith translation, Genesis fifty. 24 to 38. And they don't link you to it. Why not? Who did this program? 2 Nephi 3.22 2 Nephi 4.2 parentheses 1 to 32 5B TG promise Really? You put promise in the topical guide. C. Jacob 2, 25. D. Genesis 45, 7. Parentheses 5 through 7. Genesis 49, 22. Parentheses 22 to 26. 1 Nephi 15, 12. Parentheses 12 and 16. 1st Nephi 19.24 2nd Nephi 14.2 Topical Guide Vineyard of the Lord 5E 2nd Nephi 6.14 Doctrine and Covenants 3.18 parentheses 16-20 I think we can look up this one but then 5F Isaiah 42, 16, 1 John 2, 8, 1 Nephi 21, 9. They don't even put a footnote for Messiah. So that we would know it's Jesus. <clears throat> Oh, it's 
two, yeah, they gotta go to 16. They skipped 16 for this. For Doctrine and Covenants 3, which is E, 5E. 5E is, should be made manifest unto Mormons of Joseph Smith's church in the latter days. Doctrine and Covenants 318. Wait a minute, 16. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah, 16 to 20. But they put 18. And so we do need to include 16. I wonder if they did that in the Book of Mormon. Because they're supposed to get rid of parentheses for the Spanish editions. Let's do a check. <clears throat> we're doing so well on the video. Nobody's cyber terrorizing me this morning so far. Okay, 2nd Nephi 3. It's E. Antiguo Testamento, Nuevo Testamento, El Libro de Mormon, no, that doesn't sound right. Doctrina y Cavenos. I like that pearl one. He gets to the pearl one. Second Nephi. I had a lot of English speakers in New York call it Nephi. Hilarious. Alright. They put a footnote on Messiah. They moved it from Manifest. Ooh. Ooh. And yeah, they included 16 to 20. <gasps> Spanish speakers have the advantage over English. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Are you sure you wanted to do that? <laughs> okay. You asked for it. Sixteen. Nevertheless, my work shall go forth. The Book of Mormon. 116 pages were stolen by Martin Harris. Joseph Smith is on timeout for a whole year. Nevertheless, the work shall go forth regardless of Joseph Smith being on timeout for the whole year. Because even ex-foes believe that Joseph is the author of the Book of Mormon. That somehow he memorized over three dozen contemporary books to have them plagiarized within the Book of Mormon without Martin Harris knowing about it. And then without Oliver Cowdery knowing about it. And the Whitmers at their home with Oliver Cowdery. He just has that memorization ability, and we've never heard about it. Weird. <clears throat> For inasmuch as the knowledge of a Savior, so it has to be Jesus, no other option, the Romans didn't have any other God. It was just Jesus. The Greeks didn't have any other God. It was Jesus. 
and the Persians and the Babylonians and the Assyrians and the Hittites and the Canaanites and the Chinese and the Aztecs and the Mayans. It's all Jesus. And the Egyptians. Jesus. Because that's what you're doing to the Jews. That's what you did to Yah. That's what you did to Emmanuel. That's what you did to Elijah. Jesus. Dumbass haters. Has come unto the world through the testimony of the Jews. Even so shall the knowledge of a Savior come unto my people. Stay away from 2 Nephi 29 that's in the footnotes for 17a. Which actually we need to go to 16b 29 4, 4 to 6. But thus saith the Lord God, O fools, ye shall have a Bible, and it shall proceed forth from the Jews. So it's Christianity, right? Just like the Romans, it's Christianity. The Greeks, Christianity. The Persians, Christianity. The Babylonians, Christianity. Assyrians, Christianity. Hittites, Christianity. The Canaanites, Christianity. The Egyptians, Christianity, the Chinese, Christianity, Mayans, Christianity, the Aztecs, Christianity. Are you unfamiliar with the revisionist history? Supersessionism? Where you replace another religion with yours? Now you call it true? Are you unfamiliar with the first creed of Christianity? <sighs> Mine ancient covenant people, what think they, the Christians, the Jews, for the Bible, which Christians receive from them? Yeah, what do the Christians mean? Do the Christians remember the travails and the labors and the pains of the Jews and their diligence unto me in bringing forth salvation? Unto the Christians? O oh, ye Christians, have ye remembered the Jews, mine ancient covenant people? Nay, the Christians have cursed them, have hated them, have not sought to recover them. But behold, I will return all these things upon Christians' own heads. For I, the Lord, have not forgotten my people, the Jews. Thou fool, that shall say a Bible, we have got a Bible and need no more Bible. Have ye obtained a Bible, save it were by the Jews? First Nephi, chapter 1, verse 2. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews. In the language of the Egyptians. So what the bleep is another testament of Jesus Christ doing on the cover as a subtitle for the Book of Mormon? And so here's some stuff that they don't want you to know about purposely did not reference them correctly so that you would never know about it. Section 107 verse 91 
the key of the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Well, that's Peter, James, and John, isn't it? Well, let's find out. Section 107, verse 91. And again, the duty of the president of the office of the high priesthood is to preside over the whole church. Yeah. And to be like unto Moses. That's not Peter, James, and John. No, duh. And there's Seer, Revelator, Translator, and Prophet. Because the head of the church is all those. Is Nelson a translator? Did you pay attention in conference? You skipped conference, didn't you? You go on vacation, so you don't listen to it. You just assume he's a translator. You miss that he's never called a translator. They take it out. And so he gets up at the pulpit of conference and says, I had to rely on two Hebrew scholars to tell me that the translation of Israel is let God prevail, and that the translation of Jesus is let people sin. So section 110, on the third day of Passover of the Jews, you replaced it with Easter of Christians. <clears throat> and it's a Sabbath day, Saturday, should be Saturday, I think they call it Sunday though, for the Christian version. Sabbath. Our temples are closed on the Sabbath. You're not allowed to do any work in the temple on the Sabbath day. Joseph, you're violating the Sabbath day. <laughs> I never understood that. Why aren't the temples open on the Sabbath? Oh, because we have church? Can't we have church and then go to the temple? Can't the temple workers have church when they're not at the temple? the church temples closed on Sunday doesn't make any sense because that's where you're worshiping God why are the temples closed on the day you're supposed to be worshiping God <laughs> nobody ever thinks about these things <clears throat> and so verse 11 Joseph Smith receives the key after this vision closed, the heavens were open again. Hey, a vision. And Moses appeared before us and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel and the four parts of the earth and leading of the ten tribes to the land of the north, from the land of the north. Does that sound familiar from Jeremiah chapter 23? Moses, man like Moses of the future. Joseph Smith says, after me, not the Roman period time. Joseph Smith finally becomes the president of the church rather than the presiding elder. So, yes, section 107, he's saying, I'm going to be getting the keys. Oh, yeah. And thus the temple needed to be built. <clears throat> so, section 103, verse 16, talking about the redemption of Zion in the future. 
Therefore, I will raise up unto my people. Any confusion as to who my people are, Mormons? Raise up seed, egg, baby. And they didn't even put Jesus in any of this. They left it alone. <laughs> Definitely didn't put section 8 or Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. You will not see that here. Who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel? For Mormons are the children of Israel. And the seed of Abraham. And must needs be led out of bondage. Are you in bondage, Mormons? You didn't go to conference, did you? You went on vacation and you skipped it. And so you saw the pictures that I used to put at the beginning of the videos. And you said, no, oh, Travis, you're so mean. Can't you just leave us alone? You leave the church, but you can't leave us alone. You're kicking pricks. And then you don't thank me for saving you in 2020. And you don't thank me for saving you again this year. <clears throat> this is the future Mormon. Who's going to save Mormons. Not the Jews. Because Mormons are the seed of Israel. Mormons are the seed of Abraham. Mormons are the fulfillment of all the prophecies and revelations of the Jews who wrote the Bible. The Mormon is the fulfillment of the Jewish Christ. Thus, the great and abominable church is Christianity. So, what religion does this church claim to be? Shall we find it? It got transferred yesterday, so I've got to go searching for it. Uh, there's where the prophets say, we have the title of prophet and revelator, but we will never prophesy of future events, and we will never reveal the date of prophesied future events. Huh? You deny the powers of prophet and revelator, but claim the titles, huh? And the church is true, huh? Uh, Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. Is the Book of Mormon the Jewish religion? Because it says so in verse 2. And it says so in Doctrine and Covenants section 3, verse 16. Did you not remember the scriptures I read to you? See, I'm only reading scriptures for you, and Mormons get upset. You're wrong, Travis, you're lying! <laughs> Who's illiterate, Mormons? <clears throat> and so AI responded, The Book of Mormon is a religious text of the Latter-day Saint movement. Ooh, yeah, this is why the church does not want AI explaining the church to people. Jesus is angry with the original name of Joseph Smith's church. The Church of the Latter-day Saints. Jesus is angry with that. Joseph, you left out my name. How could you? 
and so thus the acronym for the Church of the Latter-day Saints is the Church of the LDS, or LDS Church. And Jesus is angry. <laughs> Which is considered Christian. So Brigham Young turned Joseph Smith's Jewish religion into Christian, just like Constantine turned the Jews into Christian, and thus the Romans into Christian, and the Greeks into Christian, and the Persians into Christian, and the Babylonians into Christian, and the Assyrians into Christian, and the Hittites into Christian, and the Canaanites into Christian, and the Hatti into Christian, and the Egyptians into Christian, and the Chinese into Christian, and the Aztecs into Christian, and the Mayans into Christian. In the pattern. The Jews wrote the scriptures and they got it from the Egyptians. It's prophecy and revelation. What Constantine did was abominable. Thus the great and abominable church. And this church claims to be Christian of the great and abominable church. Thus you're in bondage, Mormons. You have to pay the church to be Mormon. It's not a donation. You have to pay. The church will punish you if you do not pay. You cannot leave the church. You will have to pay for it if you dare leave the church. See, Mormons leave the church, but it's Mormons who can't leave us alone for leaving. You can't let us go, can you? See, I if I've left the church, which I have, Bishop said, your preaching of the Book of Mormon goes against the words of the prophets. Why do you bother coming to church? Good point. Why am I bothering to come to church if the prophets are not preaching the Book of Mormon? I left. So the question is, why aren't you leaving Mormons? And so I do my videos about the Jewish Book of Mormon, the Jewish Joseph Smith. And so in order to talk about the Jewish Book of Mormon and the Jewish Joseph Smith, it's very obvious I have to criticize the Christian Book of Mormon and the Christian Joseph Smith and declare them as wrong. And Mormons can't accept that. They have to attack me. They can't leave me alone and let me go. The church especially. They won the lawsuits in 2020 against me. And in 2018, or 2008. And then there's some others, I think it was in 2006. Because then 2007, Shirtliff couldn't let it go. He had to attack me for what I sued uh, in 2006. And so then again, I file a petition for a redress of grievances. This is why I do, is because the church won't leave me alone. I have to protect myself. And so I sued. And they sought revenge. How dare you just submit to our abuse so yeah, in 2020, same thing, being attacked by the church. I found the receipt from back in 2008. The prophets signed the checks and presented it to the, the committee of the Congress. Exact same thing. Cohen presents the checks, shows Donald Trump's signature. Did the same thing. 
add the check <coughs> with the all 15 prophet signatures to abuse me, torture me unto death for six years of my life. And all the way down to Stevenson it was back in 2008. And so the new guys from 2020, all but Karen. And so anything they're doing sends Karen against me. That would now include Karen. All 15 are signing the checks, giving the orders. They cannot leave me alone. They won. They had Mormon judges who said no. Church won. I lost. I'm trying to move on. Church won't let me. This is why I'm here, not still in West Valley. Because the church can't leave me alone. So, one final scripture for you. That's a repeat. <coughs> and so, yeah, let's let's do the Matthew one first, so that you understand, so that you're not confused. Where are you getting this from? So, judge not that you be not judged. Matthew chapter 7. And so, to judge not, lest ye be judged. Verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them, not judge them, know them, not judge them, by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs, or thistles? No. Grapes come from grape seeds. Apples come from apple seeds. Oranges come from orange seeds. But they use thorns and thistles, because those are weeds, and figs. Yeah, is that like a wig? A weed? There's Fig Newtons, those are pretty good. <laughs> Do they even have those? I haven't seen those. I guess they are there, I just have to look. Because there's generic brands of Fig Newtons now. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall judge them. Fruits are the completed works of a seed. The finished product. You know, seed egg, baby sprouts, grows up into a full-grown human. <clears throat> okay? By their fruits. And so, we are liken the word unto a seed. Alma chapter 32, start in verse 28. You have to produce the fruit of the word. You can't just hold the word in your hand and have warm fuzzy feelings that you know it's true and cry and testify that you know the seed is true and call it fruit. It's not fruit yet. You didn't plant it. You gotta manifest the truth. Because if you plant it and you produce it and it becomes a thorn, it's not fruit. You can judge it as a thorn. Just like false prophets. Deuteronomy 19. It's actually 18, verse 20. And then the false accusers is 19. So yeah, if a false prophet says stuff 
what are the results? Nelson, let people sin. <laughs> Is it true? Is it from Hebrew? Does the name Jesus contain sin? <laughs> yeah, it's just like the word Israel. Does it contain the word prevail? No, you dumbass. God. Section 85, verse 7. And it shall come to pass that I, the Lord, will send one mighty and strong, holding the scepter of power in his hand, clothed with light for a covering, whose mouth shall utter words by which you can judge him. Eternal words, while his bowels shall be a fountain of truth. That's a lot of pressure on a guy. To set in order the house of God the temple not open on Sundays but you don't understand we don't need the temple anymore when he's here he is and you will be like him but you know that's part of setting the temple of in order <coughs> it's his house and to arrange by lot the inheritances of the saints. Because we're not in Zion. And so, again, this is how you will know him, Mormons. Section 107, verse 92. The man like Moses, remember? He shall have visions and dreams of his authority. He will be a revelator, giving days and hours of prophet predictions of the future. And he will be a translator of Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian, which are still dead languages to this day, which means he's going to have to decipher them. So this is a very big clue as to how to find them, Mormons. Because he's going to be a Mormon through Brigham Young. Because remember, Joseph Smith, erector, erection, Brigham Young, insurrection, David Moses, Emmanuel, resurrection, second erection. Of Joseph Smith's erection. Get your mind out of the gutter, girls. All you ever think about is seed egg baby. <clears throat> this is how you will know him. Having all the gifts of God which God bestows upon the head of the church. Nelson failed. We know him by his fruits of thorns and thistles and briars and noxious weeds to afflict and torment Mormons. I remembered it. you know where that comes from? You don't? This is really bugging me. I'm cutting off my chin. <clears throat> so this is how you look for them, Mormons. Can you find them? In 2020, that's the Exodus year. What is the Exodus? I was going to do that this morning when I woke up. That was what was on my mind after waking up from my dream of Mormons who didn't want to believe. Let's see. There's the burning bush. Guess what? It's a vision, not literal. Uh, and so, yeah, he complains and whines and argues. So this is exactly where we're looking for. 
okay. Moses said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, said he, I am the Lord thy God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses did hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. It was a burning bush. What do you mean look upon God? God is a burn, burning flame in a bush? Which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of the, their taskmasters. Oh, bondage, huh? Just like Mormons? Yeah, man like Moses. The story of Moses is the future Mormon. Thus the house of Israel are you, Mormons, remember? You are the house of Israel. You are the seed of Abraham. This is you that the author is talking about here. <clears throat> I am come down to deliver Mormons out of the hands of the great and abominable church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and to bring Mormons up out of that land to Zion in southern Illinois, a land flowing with cows, milk, <laughs> unto the place of the Christians and 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 the Christians. Because everything is Jesus. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the Mormons is come unto me, and I have seen their oppression, wherewith the great and abominable church oppresses them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee to court against the great and abominable church, Jesus Christ, that thou mayest bring forth Mormons the Mormons out of the great and abominable church. And so the man like David Moses the third said unto God, Who am I that I should sue the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that I should bring forth Mormons out of the great and abominable church? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto Mormons, they shall say, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. They shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, Emmanuel. That's... <clears throat> it is not I am that I am. That's stupid. <laughs> Again, you need to know Paleo-Hebrew. And so, Exodus 3.14, I guess we might as well, since we're here, we don't want it. It's different from Yahweh. There's a change in one of the letters. <coughs> Actually, two of the letters. was I am? Uh, they don't 
have it like turn fourteen. There it is. Okay. And then Westminster Leningrad Codex. <coughs> and so it is spelled with the A, the first letter of the alphabet, the H, which is the flail for air, and then the creation combo glyph. And then the H again. So the creation, which is the dividing of the waters from the heaven and the earth, with the air in the middle, for Yah, when he completes it, he's now called Yahweh. And so you have the A at the beginning, which is the three days of darkness over the United States of America from the first year to the last year of the latter days. <clears throat> and so, yes, Yah. So, Ishmael. It's supposed to be a guttural in there. So the name of Yah is the sun god. Yah, sun god. The three shadows cast on the earth, forming the first letter of the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet for the latter days. Thus, the air is where the sun is. Emmanuel, Amen. Son Amen. That's his name, Mormons. That thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Emmanuel hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the Mormons, Lord, you God of your fathers, sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. That's the name you're looking for, Mormons. Emmanuel, Son God at noonday. He who is from the crossroads of the Son God at noonday. That's his name. And so, seriously, you don't know? You've never used Google before? From the crossroads. So we can't do baby name meaning. So he who is from the crossroads. Seriously? You have to know the name before you can figure it out. <laughs> oh wait, hey, look at this. Amazon. He who is from the crossroads, an autobiography. He who is from the crossroads, an autobiography. Amazon. Asterisks. Free. Shipping on qualified orders. He who is from the crossroads. Rating five. One review. Really? <laughs> one review? Five dollars. Thirty day returns. <laughs> Don't buy this book. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> December 24th, 2016 was when it was published. What is the name he who is from the crossroads? Oh my hell. Fine. Baby. Meaning. Travis. Toll collector? Added this crap. 
No! Oh. oh my god, AI is destroying things. Traverser or cross to cross. Travailer. Tollgate keeper. Oh my hell. Here we go. She knows. Gotta ask a woman on this, cause dear God. Crossroads. <laughs> it's from the Latin, not the French, dumbasses. destroying everything. Toll collector. Give me your money. Stick them up. It's Jesus who does that. <sighs> okay. And... Okay. So, chapter four. Moses answered and said... But behold, the Mormons will not believe me. Is this true, Mormons? Do you not believe me? Nor hearken unto my voice. Anybody recall the previous scriptures? You know, verse 40 of the Joseph Smith history. What happens? Yeah, because Jesus came and nobody listened to him and they were utterly destroyed. Blatantly obvious, there are problems when you turn scriptures into literal history. <sighs> For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. He did. In the Holy of Holies of the Salt Lake Temple. I saw exactly what it looked like. I'd never been inside. And after I, I was freed... Or, no, yeah, that's when I had the, the uh, dream of seeing uh, Jesus <coughs> in the Holy of Holies with all its glory. I then uh, had access to the internet, and one morning I was thinking, oh, yeah, I wonder what it looks like. I wonder if there's a picture somewhere out there in the internet. And I found it, and I went, oh, wow, yeah. That's exactly from my dream. A little table in the middle and the, the painting of Joseph Smith's first vision on the wall. I never knew that. And there it was. Somewhere in my files I've got the color version. Only I can't, I've gone back to try to find it because I can't find it. It wasn't labeled properly in my files. So I've been trying to find it again, and I can't. I can only find the black and white versions. But nonetheless. <laughs> exactly from my vision. And then I also saw him uh, on the cross in the Roman period time. With the whole field of others. Literally hundreds of people on crosses and then it zoomed in to Jesus on the cross and it was during the night time and there were storm clouds and yeah, only the light was from the fire torches Abinadi scourged by uh -huh. I'd have to quote it so that you'd understand it's not my word. The definitions have been changed to mean other things. Gay is no longer happy. <laughs> uh, so then he says, what is in thine hand? The Book of Mormon cast it to the ground. I will not burn the bark. Cast it to the ground. And it became a serpent. <laughs> and 
Moses ran away. Put forth your hand, take it by the tail, became a rod in his hand. <clears throat> and then he's as white as snow. And this is what people don't get. They criticize the Book of Mormon. Because remember, it's not Jesus of the Roman period of time who would have been black. <laughs> and so instead, let's see, it's 11, the condescending Jesus. <laughs> Verse 13 of First Nephi chapter 11. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the great city of Jerusalem, and also other cities. And I beheld the city of Nazareth. And the city of Nazareth I beheld a virgin, referring to Virgo, because this is his actual birth. But it's also being used as a dualism prophecy for the start of his ministry. I've gone over this a billion times. And she, the mother, was exceedingly fair and white. So is this racism? Or is it prophecy about my mother? Be careful, because in claiming that the Book of Mormon is racist, you are being racist. My mother is white. But she's also got a little bit of black in her from her father's side, who were slave owners in North Carolina, and we have an ancestor who raped his 14-year-old slave girl. She's from West Africa when she was taken hostage with her parents. Sold into slavery to my ancestor on the plantation in North Carolina. So thus, yes, 14-year-old girl, just like Mary, bought, raped, the family disowned her because she's a slave. It was an embarrassment to the family. So no inheritance to her and her child, but thanks to the eventual constitution and the freeing after the Civil War would eventually come my grandpa and thus my mom whose name is Judy the betrayer the female form of Judah Judas Utah phonetically the same so yeah she was born in Utah Logan It's Logan. <laughs> As uh, her uh, grandfather was the egg guy out in Logan at the time. And my grandpa served in World War II, was an officer in the Pacific. Uh, as a dentist, he was stationed in Alaska where he did the teeth of all of the soldiers. Because of the post-traumatic stress, he went into child dentistry instead of adult dentistry. And so he did the best he could with my stubbornness. See this? You see that gap over here? This is because this was a massive gap. This is a baby tooth with a cap on it. <laughs> and you can see it's damaged. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. This? Yeah, it's still crooked. But you should have seen it before. <laughs> I did not like wearing retainers. But, uh, yeah. All his work, the cavities that he had to put in, still remain to this day. Whereas those who have since done work on my mouth, yeah, they're out. None of them survived. They're all gone. They suck. My grandpa rules. And 
my grandpa saw it. I had to get a filling on my mission. And it was a, a woman who was from Europe and she did it. And when I got home from my mission, my grandpa looked at my mouth because he had known, because my mom told him, because I told my mom that I was getting a filling. <coughs> and, uh, and he looked at it and went, oh my God. <laughs> and he tried to smooth it out and pack it in better, but it, it was too late. He said, it'll be out in five years. He predicted the day and hour of it coming out of my mouth. He's that, was that good of a dentist. And sure enough, five years later, I wasn't even thinking about it. I was having a burrito for lunch and then, oh, out it came. And I'm going, oh crap, ah, oh, uh. And then my associative memory kicked in of my grandpa saying five years from now it'll fall out so I'm doing the math it's this year oh wow huh five years amazing <sighs> that was 1997 1992 when he saw it five years <coughs> And so, yeah, you can go through the whole thing of the exodus. It's me. I did it. 2020. My mom, she's white, but comes from a black ancestor who was raped as a 14-year-old girl, thus fulfilling the prophecy of the Bible, Matthew. A 14-year-old girl during the Roman period time. So she's black, but not really black. It's more olive skin. <laughs> All the prophecies have been fulfilled. That's what you're supposed to test for. The fruits. You're supposed to have a checklist. The scriptures are your checklist. The Book of Mormon. All scriptures you don't put Jesus in them that'll screw you up you just go through the checklist put me to the test because you're not putting Nelson to the test they're God and by not putting people to the test you get deceived it's all you had to do rather than complain and mock and scorn and laugh at me. You just put me to the test and you did. You never will. The church has to be true at all costs, no matter how abominable it is. And that is your Christ. He's here. And so are you going to be utterly destroyed? Yeah, because you're not hearkening. The one thing you're supposed to do and he did just like Jesus during the Roman period time. Jews didn't hearken. <laughs> and they were utterly destroyed. On 9th Ave. So yeah, we just had 9th Ave. And what did I do on 9th Ave? Yeah, I poured water on the altar. Amazing. Just like in 2020 when I parted the waters for us to pass through on dry ground to Zion and you didn't go so then the waters came back in again you missed it so now here we are 9th Ave the day that you'll burn as an oven and I poured water on the altar and saved your lives and Nelson failed again you do understand this is what Nelson is doing he's trying to force the fulfillment of prophecy. You can't do that. It has to come naturally, Nelson. Christians have been doing it. It's not working very well. They're having some difficulties too. And so, in case you didn't know, because you're not following me, 
the temple was supposed to be finished for the April 6th conference. Nelson was supposed to have a big old rededication ceremony and unveil the new place for Jesus. This comes from scripture. The Lord will suddenly come to his temple before the day that shall burn as an oven. <clears throat> and in the church's mind, it's different than Joseph Smith and the Jews. Because in the way to perfection, This council in the valley of Adam on Diamon is to be of the greatest importance to this world. At that time, there will be a transfer of authority from the usurper and imposter Lucifer to the rightful king, Jesus Christ. Our Lord will then assume the reins of government. And so this is before he shall come from the clouds of glory and burn everybody. 8 April 2024 from Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 and 17. Science, remember? Astronomy. Just like all those cute little weather girls talking about the hurricanes and the tornadoes that are coming in the future. Hasn't happened yet. We don't believe you. We're staying where we are. We're not going to flee and save our lives. We're going to stay and die. Just like the Palestinians in Gaza. This is our home. We're not leaving. All oh, those mean old Israelis, they attacked us. Why didn't you leave? It's our home. So why aren't you blaming Hamas? Um, so you're supporting Hamas? They're the terrorists. They're the bad guys. They're holding hostages still. And you didn't leave and you're standing up in front of Hamas holding hostages and getting attacked by Israel and you're the victim? Dumbass. I still see the news. They still fall for it. Supporting the terrorists against Israel. In this council, Christ will take over the reins of government, and he shall give the government to the Mormons, the saints of the Most High. He shall give the government to the saints of the Most High. But the members of the church at large will not know of it. The saints cannot know of it. Way to perfection, Adam on Diamond. And so this is what Nelson was planning. He is to receive the government, secret combination to receive the government. And then for conference weekend on the 6th, rededicates the temple. The Lord suddenly comes to his temple before the day that shall burn as an oven. and unveil the coming of Jesus with the new placement of the statue on his throne. This was the whole point and purpose of the DC temple. They purposely put the second coming painting by that Mormon right there at 
the end of the hall where you then branch off to where you need to go. The second coming is this. When Jesus comes from the clouds of glory and burns people, he's not on a white horse. Mormons correct John the Revelator. <laughs> 8 April 2024 is the sign in the heavens of that. To see what Nelson was doing. Lord suddenly comes to his temple, dedicated on the 6th. Comes from the clouds of glory on 8 April, that Monday, after conference. Then 9th Ave, the day that shall burn as an oven. Nelson had planned to finish the temple, declare themselves sovereign of the United States, that Jesus is the one true king, and then people are going to get mad and then burn the Mormons. They that come shall burn Mormons. And then the church would claim the insurance money for the destruction which is multi-billions and then get extra money from the federal government for not protecting them giving them a guilt trip they are forcing the prophecies and revelations to be for them this has precedent remember the conference center Gordon B. Hinckley Yep, Isaiah, is it chapter 2 or chapter 4? <clears throat> it's in the Book of Mormon. Um, yep, 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. So it's got to be Utah and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. That's why he built the conference center for 2000, in preparation for the Olympics. Now do you understand why they want the Olympics back in Utah? For 34, isn't it? whenever it is and that's why the church donated to that Olympic thing and yes last night's church news they're setting this all up because Nelson failed <laughs> and so yes the temple still has years to go to be finished but they failed to do the signs in the heaven connections They are trying to force the prophecies after failing. Nelson didn't get the temple finished. He didn't get the palace for Jesus finished. He didn't get the throne for Jesus finished. He doesn't control the government yet of the whole world. Failed, failed, failed. And the assassins that they paid the Judas price to did not burn Mormons in this temple square. So the church can claim the insurance money for it. World War III has not begun. The war against Islam and Christians have not begun yet. Albert Pike, Zionist, not Israel, but because of the Bible, people think it is Israel, and so the whole Islamic world is against Israel. Hmm. Exactly as Bible prophecy according to Christians? It's Mormons! 
So yes, this church is purposely trying to force the prophecies to be this church. And it is, but not the good prophecies, the bad prophecies. And they keep falling into fulfilling them. Every time they try to be the good guys, they fail and they're the bad guys. All you had to do was run the test. <laughs>